Okie dokie. Hey guys, it's been a minute. It's been a little while since I made one of these videos, but here I am. And uh, I've been like taking time to recover from my leg workouts. See, with calisthenics, it's easy to focus on the upper body mainly, but then we tend to neglect some of the lower body and that doesn't go for everyone. Some of the smart people, you know, they balanced it from the beginning, but me, I just hated doing legs because my legs needed the most development. So um, I like to take my time with it, but I only really started taking it more seriously in the past six months or so. And did I get any progress? Did I see any progress? No, I didn't see any progress whatsoever for like a little while. And then I built up enough muscle mass to be able to actually do something with it. And then, you know, like, but I was quite surprised actually that I could just go straight into doing like lunges, walking lunges, stationary lunges, uh, you know, like the step ups and like the jump ups. I don't know what these exercises are even called yet because with everything else, I went through understanding the, the movements and understanding control and things like that. But I never actually took time out to figure out how to do the leg exercises. This time I just kind of used my intuition and the knowledge that I have from training other muscles in my body and then basically applied that to the legs as well. And so, you know, with, the, with all what I've learned about recovery and everything else, um, I basically turned around and started using that knowledge and applied it to the other areas of my body, such as my glutes and my... And then when I started training them, I started to realize that, wow, I'm actually quite you know, I'm lacking quite a lot in this area. Uh, I've severely neglected my legs for a long time. And then I came across another, dis, you know, understanding, and that is that you can actually be training your whole body and even your legs, and you could be like rigorous about your nutrition and you could just be generally healthy and have like good, you know, functioning homeostasis and everything else in your body but then still have like articulation weaknesses and articulations to do with like your fingers, your feet, the, the toes, the fingers, and how they link up to the rest of the body, like, you know, through your ankles and through your wrists and your elbows and stuff like that. And I noticed that, you know, that's kind of one of my weaknesses. It's like the extremities, so like your fingers and your feet and the places where like there's less blood circulating is where I had most of my issues. Um, so I figured I, I should start working on that. So I bought these like barefoot shoes. I don't know if you can see them. Let me try and get a, see them shits. Yeah, so I've got some barefoot shoes and then ever since I've been using them, they say not to use them like too often for too, too long, it, especially when you're a beginner because it can strain, like if you think you're using all these like small muscles. Like if you look at my hand, you can see all the intricacies there. There's like tons of little small muscles attached to all the bones and stuff. And it's the same with your feet. So when you've got that same thing going on in your feet, you've got to think with your hands, you're actually touching things all day and you're grabbing onto things and you're using your whole hand and your wrist and the forearm and everything else, linking up to your biceps and your shoulder. But you're not necessarily using your feet like every contact point in your feet, you're just kind of using it. And so like you've got the ball of your foot like under your big toe and the next toe. And then you've got like areas of um, your foot, which, you know, like your heel and you've got the smaller part here. So all these areas need flexion and contraction and, you know, eccentric movements to stay muscular and to stay fit otherwise your body will just pick up on it and be like there's no blood flowing here there's no uh stimulation here and there's stimulation in other areas of the body let me replace this or like stop feeding this area and start to feed other areas of the body like remove protein from one area of the body to another area of the body and i suspect that's what happens when people get stressed and they lose all their glute glute uh, gluteus maximus muscles, you know, their glutes, their ass. People lose their ass when they get stressed. When you see like women or men walking around with like a big, you know, gap in their pants and there's no muscle. I'm one of them. I used to have a huge ass, 
you know, uh, when I was like 15, 16. I remember I used to be insecure about my blazer. My blazer jacket used to pop out, like, you know, but that was probably a postural issue as well because I was sitting like this all the time. So if you're sitting like this all the time, you, guess what, you're gonna kind of be standing like that too. So you gotta like work on pulling them shoulders back and fixing the posture. And that's what I've been doing. I've been concentrating on posture, gait, the way you walk, the articulation, you know, flexing my legs my, in, in the morning to the point and, and flexing my ankles, you know, you could say in a circular rotational motion to the point where I feel like a pinch and a spasm and a cramp and holding that and going through it until my body recognizes, no, you know what, this isn't a pain point anymore. This is the part that you need to grow. And that's what we do now. So you, I've learned that that's what I used to do with my shoulder. I've got bursitis in my shoulder, but I pushed through the pain and now it's a lot more pinned back and there's a lot more balance between the left and the right. And I'm able to actually, you know, uh, how can I say, develop my back there, uh, although with a bit of caution, it is possible just through, you know, uh, resistance training and stretching. Both need to be done. You can't just train and expect that to happen because you'll end up with imbalances. But at the same time, you can't just stretch and expect muscle to build there because it won't because there's no resist. There's no reason you're not t signaling to your body to build muscle there. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. That's probably why you haven't heard from me in a little while because I've been prioritizing things. Wow, I've never seen those striations before. But yeah, I've been working hard and I've been fatigued as well because I've been working hard. And so when I get fatigued, it's kind of hard guys to just even talk. Like I'm at this point where I get tired and I can't even talk like physically. I don't even have the mental capacity to be kind. <laughs> so, so there's a, you know, take it as a blessing in a way that you haven't heard from me. I'm getting a lot of requests from friends mainly uh, asking to make videos about the my supplement stack and what I take for supplements and what doses I take, where I source my nutrients, um, whether I buy them in bulk, whether I buy them in powders, capsules, things like that. So I get a lot of questions on that, so I'm going to be dropping tons of videos about that. If you try and use these supplements and nutrients like me, you're not going to get the same results. Guess what? Because you're a different person, right? Different things work for different people and like this is why it's essential to take a you know interpersonal approach when I do therapies with people like yourself I'm actually taking as much information from you as possible it's not the other way around I don't just expect you to take the information from me and apply it I take the information from you and I apply it to my method of instructing you and hopefully guiding you to a way that you can necessarily heal yourself or um, become physically fitter or lose weight or whatever your goal is or have a healthy pregnancy you know walking backwards I keep telling people whenever I see them I was like yo you don't know the power of walking backwards this like here it, it does some special wonders to especially in these barefoot shoes like your muscle activation your calf activation is unmatched and it does like it, it's a natural movement and because it's a natural movement, it's easy to build the calves that way because it's just repetitions. It's like those calves were designed for volume training. Still, volume training. I don't know, like just walking, just using, you know, like lifts like that and, uh, you know, just general activation. I think it's more of a mind muscle thing. I think, I think uh, it's, it's easy for my muscle type, the, the type of muscle that I have, if you don't stimulate the muscle, the muscle dis, it just turn, you turn into bone. And that's one of the reasons I started training in the first place. Some people, if they don't train as fine, they gain a little bit of fat and they keep their muscle and their body gets like, reacts that way. For some of us, like who are like still in hunter-gatherer mode, like physiologically, we need to stay active and it's important to stay active because of blood circulation multiplied by muscle activation. It's very important to activate your muscles if you're the type of person that just, you know, if you sit around too long, you just start feeling like really bad just because you sat around for a bit long, whether you train or not. Like I'm the type of person, you know, I'm highly active these days, right? 
as you could, you know, probably imagine. So I, I, I like to stay active. And um, even still, if I, take, if I take like a second day and I haven't gone for a walk or gone out the house for a walk or like cycled or anything, like that's it. It's like it's downhill spiral from there. So you've got to catch the momentum as a minimal. If you're ill or you're overweight or you're just new to fitness and health and stuff, just walk. If you smoke, don't run. Just walk. Start walking. Take that low intensity, high oxygenating exercise. Get your UV rays, especially between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. if you can. If not, even an evening walk is going to help you digest. It's going to help you sleep and, you know, definitely help your posture and stuff if you've been sitting around all day. Now, this pathway has been nice and quiet today. I don't know why it ain't like this all the time, but I got lucky today. So anyways, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.